Okay, sir. We will start in two minutes. Okay. Uh, kitchen, sir. Shall we allow everybody in, inside? Yes, sir. Yes. <coughs> Okay, sir. Shall we start now? Uh, sure. Yes, sir. Good evening, everybody. Happy English and educational web series on English language empowerment and soft skills is entering its into a teenage. Actually, it's the thirteenth program of this series. An initiation taken by. english home english teachers forum and in collaboration with swastika national school of mangaluru uh, we have completed sessions on various topics right till now uh, topics related to english language empowerment and also soft skills with the enthusiastic participation of the teachers from all over karnataka it is going ahead successfully today we are going to have a session on an introduction to sentences a structure based classification by dr shashidhar ex faculty regional institute of english i would like to extend my warm welcome to dr shashidhar sir to this program welcome sir thank you very much thank you mr ashok uh today's chief guest is or prakash block education officer brahmavara he will join us little later due to some unavoidable uh, reasons he is he is not with us right now he'll join us at the end of the program he will speak to us at the end of the program Mr. Ravi Singh, also I would like to welcome him to this program, and I would like to acknowledge the presence of S. Venkateshwaran Sir, uh, Uzma Rahil Madam, uh, uh, from RI, and Geeta Shirali, the lecturer, Director P, and other dignitaries on this forum, and also I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Raghavendra Holla, the Chairman of Swastika Charitable Trust, Mangalore, and also the Technical Assistant, and also the lecturer. Uh, Uh, Mr. Kishan Kumar uh, from Mangalore also to this session. And also, I would like to welcome all the participants who are very interestingly participating to all, all through this series in different programs. Uh, well, welcome to all of you. Now we are starting with the introduction, brief introduction of the trainer today's trainer. We are moving ahead. It is my proud privilege to introduce today's resource person. a senior educationist a great personality dr shashidhar sir former professor and head of the department of english the national college basavanagudi bengaluru he had his a graduation from regional college of education and post graduation from 
the University of Mysore. He completed his MPhil from CIEFL Hyderabad. Has been associated with various satellite and Olympia radio programs, introducing the literary pieces on the newly introduced textbooks by Government of Karnataka. As a theatre artist and activist, he acted in Kurma Vatara, an award-winning film by Sri Girish Kasravalli. This is the brief introduction of today's uh, trainer, Dr. Uh, D. R. Shashidhar sir. I would like to welcome him again to the session, and I would let the I would I would like to let the floor to for his training session. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Ashok. Do I start? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. First of all, let me congratulate all of you on designing a wonderful activity of this kind. I'm extremely happy to be here this evening. I'm really happy to be interacting with fellow teachers. And what is more interesting and challenging to me is the fact that I'm talking to fellow teachers who already seem to know a great deal about what I wish to speak this evening. As you all know, uh, the topic of my conversation with you or talk with you is types of sentences, an introduction to sentences, structure-based classification. I wish to make this as interactive as possible. I hope all the participants who have assembled here will interact with me without any hesitation so that we make this session not only interesting but useful to all of you. Okay. Um, yes, sir. I have been told that this is the 13th episode of this particular program and all of you have been listening to various lectures on different skills in language learning and last week you all listened to about communicative skills and how to make your speech very effective. I would like to ask you one question before I carry on with my subject, you know, the topic. What exactly constitutes a language? Can anybody tell me what constitutes a language? Hello? I would like the teachers to talk to me. What constitutes a language? Sir, some are giving the answer uh, in chat box. Okay, able to communicate with other. Sir, it's a, I'm Mahantesh from Bagalkot. Yeah. Uh, sir, it's a set of uh, expressions uh, joined or used by a proper syntax. That is what we call as grammar. Fine. To express our feelings, emotions, etc. Fine. But my question is, Mr. Mahantesh, so, what exactly a language, what constitutes a language? Um, uh, sir, so I'm a student, Ryan. Exactly. And uh, I feel a, a language is anything that, that has a composition of words that makes sense in a communicable right. way. Words, yeah. And uh, here is Asha telling us it is used for communication. Vanita says it is for emotion. Fine. No doubt you use words, but let's get back to get to the fundamentals. What do these words, what constitutes words? All right. Shall we say sound basically? Language consists sounds. of sounds. Yes. 
agreed now vanita madam vanita says language consists of sounds how many sounds are there in english okay exactly 44, 44 sounds number doesn't really matter but do they make any sense to you these sounds sometimes not but it means sometimes they do right in a word yes all right i agree with you now that you said there are 44 sounds you know vowels and consonants let me pick up one sound randomly okay let's say ba okay ba is supposed to be yeah not not ba 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 asha ra book okay yeah ba is supposed to be a bilabial voiced plosive sound yes exactly that's it does it make any sense does this particular sound make any sense does it make any sense no yes in kannada yes we are talking of sounds in english asha in kannada yes not even b i think you are already including a vowel sound there it is just a consonant without a vowel being used along with that b is just a consonant as you said it doesn't really make any sense i suppose you know that this is the smallest most indivisible unit in english language it cannot be divided into smaller bits further it is almost like amoeba a unicellular body you cannot divide it further that is the smallest unit we call it a phoneme all right so these four sounds are phonemes and they do not really make any sense in isolation but when they occur in a particular prescribed or systematic prescribed environment or in proximity they do make a sense take for example book here in this particular word there are three phonemes b o k when these phonemes occur in this particular order it gives you the notion of a book which is you know we call it a word when these phonemes occur in this particular order in this particular environment you get a word and these four names must occur in the same order you know you cannot have u k b u sorry not u u k b ba you cannot have it or ba k u they cannot occur in this particular order it has to occur in this particular order only in the environment prescribed or suggested by the phoneticians only then it becomes a morpheme okay b is a voice bilabial plosive sound the smallest most indivisible unit cannot be split further but when it when it occurs in a proper environment of other sounds it forms a form for morpheme book now is a word 
a combination of three morphemes in a particular order. It introduces only a concept. Now, if you go to the next level, you have, as an example, in order to, you know, if you pick this up, in isolation, it might give you some meaning in order to. But when you put them all together, it becomes a cluster of words. You call it a phrase. You know, gradually you see how these, the smallest indivisible unit getting evolved into a morpheme and then into a phrase to form a cluster of words, but still it does not give you any meaning. And if you go to the next level, see there, the bank was not open. You know, this is totally different from the previous example. In order to, in order to join together occurring in a particular order does not give you any sense at all. But whereas the next one, the bank wasn't open, you have the subject, a finite verb, and it is a single unit it is capable of giving you meaning on its own. You call it an independent clause or a main clause. Why do you call it a main clause? It has a subject and a finite verb. What do you mean by a finite verb? To make it easy for you, for all the teachers, because I had a tendency to forget one of them. So I coined an abbreviation. What does a finite verb consist of? It has P and T. P and T. Person, number, and tense. Okay. A finite verb has person, number, and tense. So if a sentence has to be meaningful, it should have at least a subject and a verb, very much like Corona spreads, the baby sleeps, he sings. In all this, you notice the verb in this particular example that you find on the screen, he sings. Sings is supposed to, is a finite verb. In the sentence you see, he is a second person, third person singular, third person singular, sings is simple present tense. Once again, because the subject is singular, the verb also is in singular number. Whereas in the second example, the subject undergoes a change. Instead of the third person singular, it becomes third person plural and automatically the verb also changes into plural. This is called a finite verb. A finite verb has P, N, T. It has person, number and tense. For your information, I would like to tell you there is another kind of verb, finite, non-finite verb. Non-finite verb does not come under this category. It does not have verb, it does not have person, it does not have number, it does not have a tense. For example, you have the example down below, to walk is a pleasure. Walking is a good exercise. 
to walk is it is a non finite verb it is called to infinitive walking is called a gerund you know ing you know it generally ing is the marker of a gerund but don't be under the impression in the sentence he is writing here writing is not a gerund but it is a marker of present continuous tense okay so if a sentence has to be complete independent and capable of complete meaning on its own without depending upon any external factor it has to have at least a subject and a verb okay is that clear now next example when i went next one when i walked into the classroom can anybody comment on these two sentences see a has a subject i went verb which is a finite verb does it give you any meaning i don't think so dependent clause asha is already ahead of me next one why when i walked into the classroom and i would like to draw your attention to the fact that in spite of the fact that these two sentences have a subject and a finite verb these two sentences are not capable of giving you complete meaning on their own because they begin with a conjunction when in spite of the fact it has a subject and a verb which begins with a conjunction this particular sentence is incapable of giving you complete meaning on its own this is called a dependent clause or a subordinate clause both of them okay shall we go on to the next one yeah now it is going to be purely your own exercise look at the following three sentences comment on the structure of the following sentences the train had left she was fast asleep in spite of the noise she was fast asleep having worked the whole day i would like teach us to comment on this comment on the structure of the following sentences what do you say about these sentences only single clause in the first one rashmi to x okay single clause what is this clause ah has an independent and dependent clause why is that asha where is that simple independent dependent clause in that the train had left okay you know do you all agree the first one the train had left is a simple sentence do you all agree yes because it has the train subject had left verb but mind you here had left i would like to draw your attention to one important aspect here had left is the finite verb when you have this main verb left leave preceded by a helping verb had the helping verb becomes the finite verb 
you get my point here in this particular sentence the train had left had left finite verb and there had is the finite it is capable of giving you complete meaning on its own though there isn't any object in it look at the next one she was fast asleep in spite of the noise does it give you any sense does it give you complete meaning what about the other teachers does this particular sentence give you meaning on its own yes what about this in spite of the noise in spite of the noise she was fast asleep in spite of the noise what do you call this in spite of the noise she was fast asleep in spite of the noise it is a simple sentence agreed sunil yes it is a simple sentence but what do you say about this in spite of the noise how do you describe this see she, complex ah pushpa palan that's right it is a phrase okay in it is very much like in order to that we discussed earlier on in the first part of this in spite of the noise in spite of is yes it is a phrase a cluster of words it's more or less an extension of a phrase doesn't really give you much meaning at the same time it does not affect the status of the simple sentence you see she was fast asleep in spite of noise and if you deal this phrase the simple sentence retains its original st status it is not going to be affected its status is not going to be diminished so in spite of the noise is a phrase and in spite of that this particular sentence is a simple sentence capable of giving you meaning and in spite of the noise is a phrase that adds a little bit of extra information and as i told you it is an extension of um yeah it is it is it is only a phrase doesn't give you much meaning but adds extra information to the original uh simple sentence what about the third one she was fast asleep having worked the whole day having worked the whole day is it a simple sentence or is it a complex sentence can anybody say anything on this what kind of sentence is this exactly it is a simple sentence what your comment on having worked the whole day madam pushpa what do you say about this having worked the whole day what is your description of this a definition of it having worked gerund yeah in a way it's called a non finite verb non finite because it does not have an antecedent you know a subject so the second part of the sentence she was fast asleep having worked the whole day it is not a clause it is a non finite verb and the sentence still remains a simple sentence okay having worked the whole day is a non finite verb without 
an antecedent subject. Shall we go on to the, and all these three sentences are capable of giving you complete meaning on their own. They don't depend on any external factor. Either it has, you know, generally independent sentences have SV structure, subject and verb, SVO also is, you know, you're familiar with it, SVO also is possible. And now we go on to the next item of the structured sentences. Can we go on to the next one? Next, the third one third one you see ah here is the description can you go back to two please yeah the train had left has a finite verb and it is a simple sentence she was fast asleep in spite of the noise in spite of the noise has a phrase again the sentence remains simple sentence she was fast asleep has a non finite verb and all the three sentences are independent sentences capable of giving you complete meaning on their own without depending upon any external factors. Okay, now move on to the next one. Now, I would like once again, you people to interact with me in a manner that you are allowed to or capable of in this um, online program. Compare the following sentences with two earlier sentences and draw your own inferences. Since you cannot go back to number two, I'll give you examples so that you can compare with it. You know, the train had left. She was fast asleep in spite of the noise. She was fast asleep having worked the whole day. Compare those three sentences with the ones that you have here. The scientist worked hard and found a vaccine. The leaders ordered the public to wear a mask always, but they themselves did not do it. Raju specialized in medicine, yet the parents were not happy. Either you get vaccinated or leave the country. Smilingly, she took me for a ride. The sixth example, all my examples were conventional. Therefore, I decided to make them all contemporaneous and I did it. Comment? Comment on this? From Jay Lakshmi, Madam, conjunctions. Where exactly? Compound sentence, exactly. Are they all compound sentences? Savita Omesh, fine. Every one of them is a compound sentence. What about the previous one? The previous sentences. Number two. The train had left. She was fast asleep. In comp all of them are Sunil. Okay. Co all of them are compound sentences. Do you see any difference between not sure about the fourth one, fourth one, either you get vaccinated or leave the country. Okay. Not sure, fourth one. Okay. Even that is a compound sentence. Only thing is the subject is deleted there. All right. What a fifth one. Smilingly, she took me for a ride. Smilingly, is an adverbial clause, adverbial. You know, she was smiling and she took me for a ride. Not adverbial, she was smiling and she took me for a ride. You know, this reminds me of a 
very famous line from Macbeth, you know, look like an innocent flower and be a serpent beneath it. Smiling. She was smiling and she took me for a ride. Sixth one. Do you see any difference in this particular sentence? All my examples were conventional. Therefore, I decided to make them all contemporaneous and I did it. Comment on this? Is it a compound sentence or is it a simple sentence or is there any other status that you would like to attribute it to it? Ah, uh, sure. Okay. Two sentences are joined. Only two. All my examples were conventional one sentence. Therefore, I decided to make them contemporaneous second one and I did it. There are three sen simple sentences. Agreed? Yes, you're right, madam. Vanita, you are perfectly right. Yes. Yes, you are right. There are three sentences. They are all joined together by two conjunctions, therefore, and, and. Okay? What would be your inference then? What would be your inference? You know, you in the first second, you have three simple sentences. And in this particular session, you have nearly four sentences. And the last one seems to be slightly different from the other four. What are the five? What exactly is your inference? How would you define a compound sentence? Can anybody tell me? Compare the last one, the sixth one, with fifth, fourth, third, two, and one, and arrive at your own conclusions. Okay. Somebody had mentioned there are three components. Yeah, two or more simple centers. Yes, exactly. Joined together by means, connected together by means of a conjunction. What are these clauses called? You know, clauses within a compound sentence. And you have Raju specialized in medicine, one clause. The parents were not happy with joined by conjunctions. What are these clauses called? Madam Jayalakshmi? What are these clauses called? Two or more sentences joined together using conjunctions. What are these clauses called? Raju specialized in medicine. One, the parents were not happy. And look at the last one. All my examples were conventional. I decided to change them and I did it. They are all coordinating clauses, simple sentences connected by means of one conjunction or the other. Okay, so I would like one of you to define or tell me what exactly is your inference as you observe these six sentences. Did someone mention anything about their conclusions? Look at the last one. All my examples were conventional. Therefore, I decided to make them all contemporaneous and I did it. All right. Shall we say a compound sentence is a combination of two or more simple sentences. Agreed? Scientists worked hard one sentence and they found a vaccine another sentence. It's joined together by means of conjunction and. The leaders ordered the public to wear a mask always. They themselves did not do it. Is another sentence joined together by means of a conjunction, but I hope all of you agree. Yes. 
Sure. Okay. Shall we move on to the next one? Yeah. The inferences, a sentence with more than two clauses connected by using a conjunction is a compound sentence. Each unit is independent and meaningful. It can have more than two clauses, which we call them coordinate clauses joined together. Okay, that is the last one. Clauses in a compound sentences are called coordinate clauses. Next one. Next. Fifth one. Shall we go on to the next slide? Okay. You have varieties of coordinate clauses here. Am I running against time? All right. Types of coordinate clauses. Number one, copulative. See the nature of the sentence here. He was not only arrogant, but dishonest also. She went to the city and settled there. Copulative means they joined together, you know, same status. He was not only arrogant, but he was dishonest also because the subject is repeated in the second part of it. It is deleted and it's joined together by means of a conjunction, but this type of sentence or variety of this kind is called copulative two sentences joined together by means of a conjunction, conjunctions, but and and. In this particular type of sentences, you have conjunctions functioning. They are and as well as not only, but also he was not only an architect, he was also a great singer too, but also a great singer too, you know, such kind of examples. Shall we go on to the next one? This is called adversative. He will, yeah. They did not invite me to the wedding, yet I attended it. Second sentence, the floor looks attractive. However, it is slippery. You know, in this kind of, in this category, clauses are in opposition, see? They did not invite me to the wedding. I attended it. This is opposed to the first clause, but joined together by means of a conjunction yet. And in the second example, once again, the floor looks very attractive. And the second part of the sentence, second sentence, it is slippery, is opposed to the quality of the first sentence. This type of compound sentence, these type of compound sentences are called adversative compound sentences. Are you with me? Hello? Are you with me? Oh, good. Thank you. Shall we go yes, on to sir. the next one? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. This is called alternative sentences, coordinating clauses, coordinate clauses. Either you buy it or I'll buy it. Next sentence, fasten your belt or else you will fall. Stop here or gently pass. You know, the, cl the clauses are disconnected, either, either you or I. The, the kind of uh, uh, conjunctions used here, else, otherwise, either, these are either are or the conjunctions used. So 
you find a very interesting set of sentences in this particular category. Next one. Elative. See here, the cause and effect relationship is established by using conjunctions therefore and another conjunctions called for. His lectures were very interesting, therefore everybody attended it. See, cause and effect. Why did everybody attend it? Because his lectures were interesting. What is the effect of his lectures being interesting? Everybody attended it. Second one, he was regretting his decision for he had made a wrong choice. You know, there was some realization that he had gone wrong. Therefore, he was regretting. The cause and effect relationship is established in this particular category called elative. Conjunctions used, therefore, thus, for, since, okay. Next. Comment on the structure of the following sentences. Comments, please. Oh, oh, is it copulative, Rupa ma'am? I will stop teaching you when I feel tired. Exactly, ma'am, Pushpa Palan, you're perfectly right. The boy who used to sit in the last bench was my cousin. Uh, the girl had a mobile in her hand. She could talk to her parents. Oh, I love the book you gave me. And look at the last one. This is the rat that chased the rat that ate the cheese that was on the table in the room that was. Hmm. Comments, please. It is a complex sentence. Why do you call it as complex? Can you analyze this? What do you call this? I'll stop teaching and the next one when I feel tired. Which one? Complex sentence. Can you be more specific about them? Madam Sudhaji Rao, could you be more specific about? Apart from saying complex, can you be a little more specific about your description? Very complex to me, Asha. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. I'll stop teaching you. Number three is all right. Okay. I'll stop teaching you. Is it a, what kind of a sentence is that? I'll stop teaching you. I'll stop complex to two dependent clauses. Com First one. Madam Tejaswini, yeah, it is an independent clause. I'll stop teaching you when I feel tired. That is dependent clause, adverbial of time. You know, when I feel, I'll stop teaching you. You know, the second part of it, when I feel tired, it does not give you meaning on its own unless you associate it with the simple sentence, I'll stop teaching you. So this is totally, you know, the latter part of it, when I feel tired, is an absolutely dependent clause. It depends on the main sentence, I'll stop teaching you. Second one also, you know, the boy who used to sit in the last bench was my cousin. Okay, once again, a complex sentence. What kind of a sentence? Probably we'll come to know it later on. The boy who used to sit in the last bench was my cousin. The boy, comma, just for your uh, comfort, who used to sit in the last bench, is the subordinate clause, was my cousin. 
compound sentence. In the third sentence, which is a complex sentence, I mean, which is a subordinate clause? Which is a subordinate clause? As the girls had a mobile in her hand. Yeah, exactly. First part of it is a subordinate clause because it is totally dependent on the second part of the sentence to make the sentence or the meaning complete. First part. She could talk to her parents. Exactly. Okay. So here is slightly the structure is different. You know, we call it A plus B and B plus A. You know, alpha is A means alpha uh, clause, which is independent. B clause is subordinate clause. A plus B, alpha beta clauses form a complex sentence. So in this, beta complex comes in the initial position. As the girl had a mobile in her hand and alpha clause comes, becomes the second part of it. She talked to her parents. Once again, this is a complex sentence. I love the book you gave me. Once again, there is deletion of the clause conjunction that. I love the book that you gave me. Once again, a complex sentence. And now look at the last one. This is the rat that chased the, this is the rat that chased the cat that ate the cheese that was on the table in the room that was. There is a slight spelling error. This is the cat that chased the rat. It should have been. Okay. This is the cat that chased the rat that ate the cheese that was on the table in the room that was. But yeah, inference. Quickly. Yeah, yes. Yeah, complex sentence can be a combination of a simple sentence plus more than one subordinate clauses. You are absolutely right, Asha. Thank you very much for your response. And now we go on to the next one. Inferences in a complex sentence, one clause is dependent on the other. The one that depends on the other is called a subordinate clause. A complex sentence can have a string of subordinate clauses. The best example is about the rat and the cat. Now, I have a very important information to give you, which is available in the next slide. Okay. Shall we go into the next slide, please? Okay, uh, here is the list of uh, uh, subordinate conjunctions that you can use for comparison as, as if, content, comparison, and then while, though, although, whereas. No, it is not content, it is contrast. And the place where, time, when, until, since, now, cause and effect, so that in order to reason, because, condition, if and unless, introduction, that, if and whether. These are the subordinate clauses that you use to express these notions. We will come back to this if time permits. This is just a bit of piece information for you. And we have a very interesting uh, exercise for all of you. Uh, can we go on to the next slide? Yeah, this is the bit of information that I said very important for you. In a complex sentence, subordinate clause can occur as a noun clause. Okay, a subordinate clause can occur as a noun clause. Take for example, it is a fact. You know, it's an absolutely simple sentence. It is a fact. What is that it? You know, that is why, just to make it easy for you to understand, it of a little bit of gap as a fact. What is it that it? 
that it is a known clause that the coronavirus originated in China is a fact. See that it is replaced by the noun clause. See that coronavirus originated in China, it is a noun clause and that is a fact. I hope all of you get my point. The simple sentence is it is a fact. What is that it? It is that the coronavirus originated in China. If you go to the next sentence, ah, I know it. What is it that you know? I know the coronavirus originated in China. I hope this is a very tricky uh, item here. I hope all of you are able to follow this. You know, what I meant was example A, it dash a fact. What does that it stand for? It stands for a known clause. What is the known clause that I have given for an example? That the coronavirus originated in China is a fact. Ah, I know it. What is it that you know? I know that coronavirus originated in China. Fine, next. Next. Next slide, please. Hello? Hello, yeah. yeah. I think I think uh, now we are running out of time. Shall we go to the next uh, slide? These are all once again, you know, summary of uh, the previous sections. Shall we go to the next uh, slide? I think we are close to finishing point. Am I right, Mr. Ashok? Okay, uh, shall we go to the- sir, We can uh, go up to 7.15, sir. 7.15, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Ah, shall we go to the passage? We will take the poem later on. Go to the passage. Next slide, sir. Yeah, passage, passage, yeah. It was a Sunday when in the evening. Sure, sir, next slide. Yeah, no, 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 this yeah. is the poem. Go to the next one. Okay. So the instruction here, my dear friends across the room, it is this, identify the types of clauses in the following text and analyze them, okay? Here is a passage, a very beautiful passage composed on the spot, okay? Look at this. I would like you to have a close look at this particular passage find out the types of clauses and analyze them. First, it was a Sunday when in the evening I came across a terrible accident on the road. I was curious to know the cause of the accident, but the crowd surrounding it prevented me from going near the spot. However, I could manage to speak to a person who not only witnessed the accident, but also was related to the injured. He told me if the injured had been taken to the hospital immediately, they could have saved them. And when the news of this spread all over the town, Continuation, Mr. Ashok. Next, further. Yeah. When the news of this special spread all over the town, people went on a rampage. Though by nature they loved peace, the loss of the lives made them become writers. They took the law into their hands, cannot be appreciated. Okay, 
now go back to the passage and find out identify the types of sentences it was a sunday what kind of a sentence is that okay entire sentence is a complex sentence fine can you tell me why correct yes right all of you are right it is a complex sentence it was a sunday is a simple sentence when in the evening when i came when in the evening when i came across a terrible accident on the road it is a second sentence i mean sorry it's a complex sentence i was curious to know the cause of the accident but the crowd surrounding it prevented me from going near the spot yes ma'am next one jay lakshmi madam is it a complex can you tell me why can you tell me why do you regard this as a complex sentence i was curious to know the cause of the accident one sentence but the crowd surrounding it prevented me from growing near the spot madam jay lakshmi i hope i am making it uh, clear i was curious to know the cause of the accident is one main sentence main clause okay the crowd surrounding it prevented me from going near the spot is the second simple sentence both of them are joined together by means of a conjunction but so madam jay lakshmi this is a compound sentence however i could manage to speak to a person who not only witnessed the accident but also was related to the injured yes 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 thank you ma'am jay lakshmi next one however i could manage to speak to a person who not only witnessed the accident but also was related to the injured okay complex sentence yes ma'am it is complex i could manage to speak to a person is the independent clause who not only witness the accident is another subordinate clause followed by oh, no 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 this is a subordinate clause but also was related to the injured that is a simple sentence main clause so there is a combination of a main clause a subordinate clause and again a main clause next also is complex which one is that he told me if the injured had been taken to the hospital immediately they could have saved them yes he told me is the main clause if the injured had been taken to the hospital immediately they could have saved them is the second right he told me if the injured had been taken to the hospital immediately they could have saved ha right. next one the fact that did not happen was more painful than the accident itself the fact that did not happen was more painful than the accident itself what kind of sentence is that
the fact that did not happen was made more painful than the accident itself. Can you tell me what kind of sentence is this? Any response? All right, go on to the next one. When the news of this, when the news of this spread, no, news of this spread all over the town, people went on a rampage. Hmm? When the news of when news of this spread all over the town, complex sentence, I'm sorry, subordinate clause, people went on a rampage. Simple sentence, main clause capable of giving you meaning on its own. Though by nature they allowed peace, the loss of lives made them become rioters. Hmm? Quick response, we have one more assignment to complete before 7.15, we have just 10 minutes more to go. Sir, uh, no issues, sir, if we have taken uh, more time. Can go up to the seven thirty also. Up to seven thirty also, no problem, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. When the news of this spread all over the town, I think the teachers are getting tired. Am I right? Are you getting tired? Is it too much for you? When the news of this spread all over the town, which is a subordinate clause, people went on a rampage is the main clause. This is a complex sentence. I'm talking, I'll be very happy to hear from you people how you would analyze this. Can I have some responses? Hello, you have yes, a different... Uh, in the chat box, there is the, uh, give the responses. Can you please go to the next slide? Previous uh -huh, the here itself, that's right. Complex, yeah. When the news... Okay. What about the next one? Though by nature, the Lord, they took the law into their own hands. They took the law into their own hands. Cannot be appreciated. They took the law into their own hands, cannot be appreciated. What kind of sentence is that? Though by nature they loved peace, the loss of lives made them become writers. It's a complex sentence because the sentence begins with a conjunction though. And the last one, they took the law into the they took the law into their hands cannot be appreciated. Can you tell me why it is a complex sentence, Mr. Satish Kadam? Is there a comp is there a subordinate clause there? Yes, Madam Ruparani, you are right. They took the law into their own hands. Cannot be appreciated is a simple sentence. Yeah cannot be appreciated. Fine. Now we are left with one more task. Can we go to the next slide, please? Not the prose or the passage, yeah, poem. Sorry, sir. Don't worry, don't worry. Go back one more slide. Yeah, go to the poem, please, because we are, it's already yeah. 710. Takes another 15 minutes, probably. Okay. Uh, 
identify the types of clauses in the following text and analyze them. First, you have done the prose passage. Now we go to the poem. Uh, I'm told that you will not be able to see these uh, stanzas clearly on your mobile. Therefore, I read it out to you so that you will be able to carry out the task assigned to you. Here is the poem. Whenever Richard Corey went downtown, we people on the pavement looked at him. He was a gentleman from Seoul to Crown, clean favored and imperially slim. And he was always quietly arrayed and he was always human when he talked. But still, he fluttered pulses when he said, good morning. And he glittered when he walked. Next. Further. And he was rich. Yes, richer than a king, and admirably schooled in every grace. In fine, we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. So on we worked and waited for the light, and went without the meat and cursed the bread, And Richard Corey, one calm summer night, went home and put a bullet through his head. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ashok, am I supposed to stop at 7.30? Not exactly, sir. If you want some more time, you can also utilize it. No problem, sir. Please show a back slide if it is for a screenshot. Mr. Sunil wants the previous slide. You may probably want give... the passage. He wants the passage. Not this. Uh, Mr. Yeah, this is it. So no problem, sir. If you go beyond yeah, the, the 730. Thank, no thank you, Sunil. Okay, he has got the uh, screenshot. We can go on to the point. Yeah. Shall we go on? Next. Okay. I think we need some time also for interaction. Yes, sir. Mr. Yes, Ashok? Sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. After the, yeah. Right. What do you say about this? Whenever Richard Corey went downtown, we people on the pavement looked at him. Subordinate clause, the entire thing. Entire thing is a subordinate clause, Madam Tejaswini. Which is a subordinate clause? Complex sentence, yes. Whenever Richard Corey went downtown is an adverbial of time. We people on the pavement looked at him. It is a complex sentence. Yeah. He was a gentleman from soul to crown, clean favored and imperially slim. Compound sentence, yeah. Next, he was always quietly arrayed show share next slide this answer this answer uh, previous, 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 yeah. previous previous one previous previous she won the whole the madam rupa rani one, wants one, the entire poem. go back one more time please yeah. yeah this is the starting of the poetry
ओके मैडम इट्स ओके राइट ओके फाइन फाइन या ही वाज ऑलवेज क्वाइटली अरे एंड ए ह्यूमन व्हेन ही टॉक What is that? Simple, simple. Yeah. Okay. Not full. See, and he was always quietly arrayed, and he was always human when he talked. Human when he talked. When he talked, and he was always quietly arrayed, and he was always human when he talked. First sentence, simple. Second, simple. When he talked. is a complex sentence a combination of two compound sentences and followed by a subordinate clause but he still fluttered pulses when he said good morning still fluttered pulses when he said good morning what kind of sentence is that but he still fluttered pulses complex he fluttered pulses when he said mm okay compound yeah i got it now why i know why asha says it's a compound sentence the introduction of but yes and he glittered when he walked and he glittered when he walked and he glittered and he glittered what kind of sentence is that simple followed by a subordinate clause when he walked okay it's a complex sentence hmm next again next uh, stanza next stanza and he was rich yes richer than a king what kind of sentence is that and he was rich yes richer than a king particular sentence compound yes next admirably schooled in every grace admirably schooled in every grade okay uh, madam okay he was on every grade it can be the whole sentence can be regarded as a compound sentence next what about this schooled in every okay next sentence in fine we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place in fine we thought that he was everything to make us wish we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place complex two clauses next so on we worked and waited for the light so on we worked and waited for the light is it complex madam sudha so on wait for the light
and went without the meat and went without the meat and cursed the bread compound so on we worked and waited and went the meat and cursed the bread a string of compound uh, uh, simple sentences joined together by means of conjunctions and richard cory on one summer night went home and put a bullet through his head and richard cory one calm summer night went home and put a bullet through his head okay fine apparently it looks like a compound sentence no doubt but i want to tell you it is not as simple as that we analyzed it the whole poem is very complex okay uh, it is already 720 i stop at this in fact in the passage i wanted to go back to one particular sentence but anyway we have moved further i suppose we call it the end of the session from my side no sir you can so, go sure. ahead no sir uh-huh. if you have any thing to say you can go ahead sir no problem ah uh, do you think they can speak no anybody comment on this anyone who is participating in this can add please go ahead anyone who is participating in the session can yes you can you can ask questions if you have any questions on the topic discussed today uh, you can ask and meet yourself and ask and i would like to say one thing before i hand it over to the participants i have deliberately introduced the poem into this particular uh, uh paper with the deliberate intention of telling you that even literary pieces can be used to introduce certain grammatical structure all of us you know have been under the impression only prose pieces should be used for grammar but here is one instance where even a poem is illustrated you know to you to you or to be used as a text to teach some grammatical uh, structures that was my intention that was a very deliberate intention to include the poem because we are all conventionally bound by prose passages but here is one instance of slight deviation i thought it was be really interesting in the class to analyze a poem from the point of view of grammatical structure besides the aesthetic point of it thank you okay sir thank 720. you thank you sir thank you mr ashok uh, dear participants if you have any questions uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask it hello good evening sir good evening asha please introduce yourself uh, thank you very much sir for wonderful thank you again but i miss face to face session with you Can't hear you. Thank you very much for the wonderful class. Thank you. Can you hear? The voice is yes. very good, Dr. Madam. Now is it okay? okay? Yeah, I can hear you, Asha. Right. Yeah. Okay. So my doubt is, I did not hmm. get clarity about this sentence. Shall I repeat the sentence, sir? please please the fact that did not happen was more painful than the accident itself i'm i'm I very glad that you brought this particular i'm very glad that you hit upon this sentence because that is exactly the sentence that i wanted to discuss see now go back to that sentence the fact that it did Ashok, not please happen please share the slide it is in the passage Question, sir. Yeah, almost. The Let's fact that did not happen.
application sir once again can you please share the screen last but one i think passage it's in the passage passage that's yeah that's it the fact that did not happen was more painful than the accident itself Asha, I want you to comment on this because this is the sentence that we really skipped in a big bit of a hurry. But I was a little worried that nobody drew my attention to this. Can somebody comment on this? Asha, you yourself can do that. You know, it has to be related to the previous uh, slide. I, we I, have deliberately Can I have uh, it? Thought about this, you know. In fact, I told you that this is a very tricky situation. I drew your attention uh -huh. to it. I drew I, your Sir attention is, uh, to the particular picture. Can I have your attention? Can I have your attention, Doctor Sachida? Yes, Sir. Please go on, Sir. Doctor Sachida, it was a very interesting session, no doubt. Yes, Sir. Thank you. The the the, the real Sachida was on the screen. The real Sachida was on the screen. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, to that uh, query by one of the participants there, the yes. fact that that it is missing there, that might have caused some the kind of confusion. That, that yes, it did the not fact happen. That it did not happen. It refers yeah, it to an uh, anaphoric uh, reference to yes, the people not have not been taken immediately to the hospital doctor. Exactly. Exactly. So exactly. The, the, the delay, and the delay struck it has caused some confusion. I, I must say that. And no, no, no. Asha yeah. is a little worried about how to analyze this. Yeah, Am yeah. I right, Asha? Now her question is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. See, Asha. Deliberately, sir, can we relate this sentence sentences. to the previous example? So the previous example you gave precisely, about co uh, Corona, precisely. it takes exactly, the place of it that, that is, is exactly noun clause. The I'm trying to draw your the fact. It what is that fact? You know, it what is it? Fill it up. With. The fact that they did not. It can be anything the like the, the person was not taken. The person was not taken to the hospital. Yeah, exactly, Asha. I want to make it uh, pinpointed, uh, really bang on the sub. I mean the topic. I mean the uh, issue. It does get related to the previous. Uh, you know, where we talked about the known clause. You know, it is the fact. I know it. What is that? It. It is. the fact that did not happen what did not happen the fact that the people did not take the injured to the hospital you know that kind of inhumanity on the part of the people who had uh, gathered there was much more painful than the accident itself accident can happen anywhere any time any up to anybody but what was highly deplorable was the inhuman inhumanity of the people wow. who had gathered there that is more painful am i right sir so not necessary maybe the ambulance was not available at that time nobody it has nothing to do with the inhumanity or anything like that there was no help whatsoever but even the bystanders could have simply watched it you know there were anything any some kind of arrangement happened could have happened but the fact that Anyhow, the, fact, the question is whether it is time. useful. The question oh, seems no, to be probably I'm deviating from the grammatical part of it. Yes, yes. Let us yeah, yeah, that, That's exactly the point. Let's not worry about uh, my point of view, the inhumanity point of view. You, the fact that did not happen. What did not happen? The Anything. people did not take the injured Anything. to the hospital. Okay. The people. What yeah. did not happen means that the people were not taken to. Yes. That is by, it. By any source. By any source. Wow. Now, what, what is happened? your question? What is your question? 
Yeah, what kind of, sir, Asha, you are wondering what kind of a sentence is there, yes, aren't you? Exactly. Yes, you sir. Yes, ah, sir. You, I want you, you to analyze this sentence and let me know what type of sentence it is. No, no, no. Don't ask me. You tell me. I've been talking for one and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> sir, is My it point? a complex sentence? You know, Asha, the whole process sentence? of conducting an examination is to make sure that what is done in the whole year is driven home. Okay? Yes, I sir, I can example. understand. No, 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 I'm not uh, snubbing I, you. I, I hope no, 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 sir. I know you very well. I know you very well, I'm sir. You will never very, snub me. I'm being very informal with you. It did not yes, happen. Yes, sir. Sir, is it, is it a complex sentence? Or it, it was more painful than the accident itself? Is it a simple sentence? See, uh, the fact that nobody took the injured to the hospital was more painful than the accident itself. Now you pause for a while and find out whether this is a complex sentence, compound sentence or compound. So instead simple. of the fact that did not happen, I can replace that Asha, with it. Asha, I have, ah, exactly. I have a feeling that you are mistaking that for a conjunction here. Yes, yes, sir. So here, it was more painful than the accident itself. This is the exactly. sentence. Exactly. So, this is a simple sentence. Precisely. If you take that as a conjunction, that leads you into problems. Okay. Then it is a simple sentence, sir. The I fact have to that it did not happen. That I have means, to replace this, sir. Yeah. Okay, that, refers to, that refers to what Professor Venkateshwaran said, anaphoric reference. The fact okay. that did not take people did not take you know, okay, it did not happen, was more painful than the accident itself. Okay, this is a simple uh, sentence. Ah. No, sir, do you agree? Not really, not no, really. No. <laughs> it, it, it has the structure of a complex sentence. Oh, huh. no, it has only yes, the fact that it did not happen is incomplete. Was more painful than the was accident itself. Was more painful than the accident itself. There uh. are two different classes. If you ask me. What are the two different classes? That uh, the, uh, the the fact did not. The fact is that it did not happen. Another okay. class is it was more painful than the accident itself. That's all. Now I have a feeling, as I said earlier, Asha is getting confused. You know, she's, she's mistaking that for a conjunction. That makes it a complex sentence. If you convert that into a supposing, supposing I say that the sun rises in the east. The sun? Fact. That the sun rises in the east is uh -huh. a fact. Ah, uh, this is exactly what I said earlier and in the fact. The, exactly. the first That's part is... Is a noun clause. There, 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 there is the answer for you. Ah. There lies the answer for you. Yeah, if you go by the earlier example, that, you know, uh, corona, uh, Asha said coronavirus is, is a fact. Sir, Asha, sir. are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. Ah. That the coronavirus originated in China Origin is in a China. fact. That is what we said. So the first is a noun clause. From my understanding is that yes. the fact that it did not happen. What did not happen? Okay. The people did not take them to the he hospital. He was not taken to the hospital. Yeah. Yes. I think it is a simple sentence. Okay. Thank you, sir. Right. Any more? Sir. Are there any other questions? Sir, sir. sir I have a small observation. Please, Mr. Ashok, I am going on. <laughs> I think it should be left to the participants, the teachers there. Sir, the poem that you have taken, for example. Yes, sir. When you when you start reading the whole poem at mm. one go. Yeah. Right? There, is, there are many ands and ands and ands and ands and never ending. Yes, sir. Yes. In case, mm. in case. Yes. As a as a as a uh, as a very very basic learner of English. Yeah. You know I am. 
the very presence of and yes if you split the whole poem into simple simple lines yes will i not get a feeling that all those simple concepts are connected by and therefore the whole poem is a bundle of a compound sentence compound sentence though 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 let me know yeah though in the beginning there are yes. uh, there is Hmm. as you said i don't know cause of time and things like that the poem begins with a with a complex sentence and towards the i mean somewhere in the middle there is a simple sentence as well but if we are going to look at a poem this way yes and uh, as a basic i mean as a as a novice in, in english grammar will i not get the uh, will i not go with the idea that whenever there is a coordinating conjunction or a subordinating conjunction all lines or all I, i can't call them sentences because they are not complete sentences because every sentence begins with and 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 things like that it is all this is about the action or the behavior of the yes. scoring right if i look at it from the meaning point of view perhaps i may come to the, i may i i may be wrong yes. as i said i am a novice right yes. i may go with the idea or i may get the impression that every line is a proper line you are common please i agree with you on one uh, on your observation but i would like to add my personal point of view yes, yes. number one and here th- throughout the poem does not function only as a conjunction that's right does not function only as a conjunction and the poem if you look at it from a very from a very close range yes it's very difficult to convert simply into compound complex you know it it calls for a very serious analysis no. and it's not that easy to simply say this is a simple sentence or uh, a complex sentence and a compound exactly. the whole exactly. poem poses a great deal of challenge as far as the structure is concerned okay. and probably once and uh, functions as a conjunction and every time that it is used the conjunction goes undergoes metamorphosis it plays a different grammatical function altogether thereby adding a great deal of complexity to the poem and that is the reason well, why i think complexity to the structure of the poem or the meaning of the poem structure of the poem structure mm-hmm. of the poem it is not just like a i i had the impression that it is a prose poem uh most of the modern poems are prose poems sir no, forget forget and, the, for example most uh, of the poems by tagore are prose poems no no take this uh, eliot's poem let's go then you and i when the evening is spread out like a patient ether upon etherized upon a table somebody is saying you will be between two great friends you will be between two great friends so we are not going to be between you will be between okay right right now i i think we should open it now what i want to say you said it sometimes we go with the theoretical or sometimes we go with the labeling of certain certain words uh, as conjunctions nouns yeah. etc etc we may we may uh, destroy with some kind of confusion if we have a labeling like this you think so thank you but anyway i appreciate your last point sir that poems can be used for teaching uh, structures language structures. language structure and things like that mm. and also stylistics you you would have definitely added that uh, stylistic this is how Uh, yeah. analyzing every poem into its constituent part in terms of even marks of punctuation may give some meaning thank you sir for your observation that's good thank you sir for enlightening Vikrish people Varan, like sir. me thank you sir thank for you, enlightening sir. people like much. me now we venkateshwaran sir here is a request from all the participants hmm. what is this <laughs> Sir, we want to listen to you again. Home, they brought the warrior dead poem. Warrior At least in coming the, classes. The, the warrior died long back. <laughs> the warrior died long back. Why should he bring you? No, no, again? no, sir. You taught me, but even others no, 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 want no, no, to be listened. Let us not confuse that now. Now we, we should be listening to Professor Shiva. 
I I'll talk to you personally, sir. Yeah. I'll talk to you personally. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ashish. Okay, thank, thank you. Give me some questions. Thank yeah. You, sir. Don't come to that. Give me some questions. There are any other questions? As said by Asha, it's a great uh, discussion between two great grammarians. No, thank no, you, sir. No, no. <laughs> Are there any other questions from other participants? No. Uh, okay, if it is not uh, there, uh, okay. we have missed one thing at the beginning of this session. Uh, due to some unavoidable reasons, uh, our today's guest could not join us, but he joined us in between. Uh, Mr. O R Prakash, Block Education Officer. Uh, Brahmavara, I would like to have his brief introduction here. Or Prakash Block Education Officer Brahmavara is our today's chief guest. He completed his M.A. in English, M.A. in uh, History, M.A. in uh, Education. Has 30 years of work experience in the education field. He has authored four books also. Nanna Nichina Goodwin. Adbhuta Kanasugara Chanakya Andaman Ala Agiris to Karala Prapti are his books. Now he is with us. I I request Mr. Over Prakash to speak some words with our participants. Prakash sir. Over Prakash sir. Prakash sir, he is with us actually. Hello. 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 Sir, good sir. evening. Sir, good evening. Good, good evening, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. You are already back. Okay, okay, yes, sir. Okay, can I can I speak to? Okay, can I speak now? Yeah. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Ah, sir. Good evening, everybody, sir. It's a it's a very nice experience that I am speaking to Dr. Venkateshwaran and Professor H R Shishidhar. Sir, I was a participant of R A E long back, way back in two thousand, uh, way back in two thousand, and. Uh, I had uh, associated myself with uh, working with uh, uh, Professor Hr Sheshidhar again way back in 2010 or 11 or something like that. Oh, yeah, I see. I, so I'm sorry to say, I miss much part of, sir. Hello, Hello. sir. I missed much part of that. I entered almost by the fact of the. Dr. Venkatesh and Mr. Hr Shishir were discussing. They were having a hair split discussion. They come back and said this: that sorry, I missed it. I wish all this happy evening. Are you very good, sir? Audio clarity, audio clarity. Your voice is breaking, actually, sir. So please go ahead. Prakash, sir. No, sir, he is not there. Not there. Disconnected most. Yes, disconnected. Hello. Hello. Prakash, sir. Maybe some uh, due to some network issues. Okay. You must be coming. Yes, sir. In between, any participant can express your opinion on today's topic, uh, today's session. If you wish to express your opinion or feedback, please share it. Yes, sir. 
Yes. Yes. ಡಿಸಿಡಿಸಿ Uh, was uh, in the chair and the prog- the program uh, got elongated and i joined you very late uh, yes sir sorry uh, dr venkateshwaran sir how are you with all your prayers and dr venkatesh thank you very much for the greeting thank you for your greeting sir hr shishudhar sir how are you sir i'm yeah, fine yeah, thank sir. you very much nice to see you <laughs> very nice to see you professor yes I'm sir i'm glad that you remember me oh <laughs> can i ever find you sir <laughs> okay sir uh dr rekteshwar <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, we are nearing the ending of this uh, today's session. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to um, Mr. Or Prakash, BU of Brahmavara for uh, for being today's chief guest. Thank you so much, sir. And at the same time, today we have discussed about one of the important areas of grammar uh, that has been discussed so effectively. and clearly with relevant examples proper examples it's not that easy to teach uh, such a complicated topic so easily that can be done that can only be done by people like uh, shishtar sir uh, the oral session was so active and interactive it was lively also and it was very educative and informative thank you so much for the wonderful effort put by shishtar sir thank you so much sir thank you very much sir thank you mr ashok thank you everybody yeah. and i enjoyed being with all of you thanks a lot thank you it's mr ashok for providing me the link thank you all for providing me with the link otherwise yes, i would have missed them and and i would like to appreciate the presence of pankeshwar sir also throughout the session and also for participating uh, in the discussion thank you so much sir for your presence my pleasure uh, and also i would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the participants uh, who are on zoom and also on uh, youtube uh, who are more than 100 per- participants have uh, participated live on live uh, session and the faculty of uh, swastika national school and also kishan from mangalore i would like to thank you all for your support thank you so much uh usmarail mayor madam also there uh, from rai thank you so much madam for your presence uh i think we are is better to go to the ending of the session we are going to end the meeting i will meet our next uh, saturday with some, some other topic uh from 6 to 7:30 pm thank you so much everybody uh, let's go to today thank you so much thank you